one of Dust Towers from Map 2. But at any rate, guys, I am casting with Fear Dragon. You're tuning into the Cybet Race Wars. I'm Refkin, and in the bottom left side of the map, with almost no APM to start the game, <laughs> it's it's MC. And up at the top right, we have the blue Terran player alive. And we got someone with an absolutely terrible name, Psychedelic Biatch, asking, what about that base trade O gaming match to raise money? Uh, doing, we've been doing a little bit of smack talk with Funka and Aramie on Twitter recently. More fun than real, but uh, we are looking to actually schedule that. On Friday, we will have the details announced for a rather large tournament we're going to be hosting over February and March. But until we make those details public, we can't actually schedule a date. But we are looking to Zombie Grab and myself versus Aramie and Funka, a best of seven caster show match to raise some money for a tournament. And the winner of that best of seven doesn't get money, but instead gets to pick the invites for said tournament. So, uh, again, Friday I'll message Aramie with my schedule. And, you know, he's Mr. Schedule himself. I'm sure we'll be able to find a day and an hour at some point where we can play that out. So, for those who are excited for it, stay excited for it because it's happening. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, you guys have been uh, practicing a couple of uh, good cheeses out there, too. I've been enjoying those. No, well, practicing, per se. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yesterday's Archon Mode match was really fun. We, we, have, we, we participated in the Archon Mode tournament for North America last night, for those who don't know. And uh, we beat some Grandmasters, which was kind of cool. Did eventually lose <laughs> in the round of eight to, uh, or the quarterfinals to... No, semifinal. We got to the semifinals, which is Puck and Elham. That's right. You guys got really far. Super far. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, at any rate, all of that aside, yeah. So keep, keep your ears to the ground, guys. Follow us on Twitter if you want to keep up to details of what's going on. And, of course, if you're rooting for Bay Straight TV, I hope you guys will tune in on that day. But as far as this particular match is concerned, uh, I didn't have the scores because I'm bad. It is 1-1 here in the ace match. So... Uh, ace match and chat if you got it, guys, because I don't get to do this with you all live too often. I'll spam some ace matches. Woo! Well, alive, uh, not moving across the map with his Reapers, sort of just looking around, I think, for the, the probe, or maybe even just getting ready to deal with any sort of adept harassment that could be coming out early on from MC. Uh, again, MC, a bit well known for loving his adepts and just adept harassment, but... I feel like this is one of those maps where as long as you raise the supply depot in time, it's difficult to make those adept harassments work. Unless you're going for like the pylon wall in at the front, photon overcharge down the supply depot, run the adepts in and just try and go ham. The thing is though, for every time you think that, there's always that one game where the Terran player leaves the depot down versus the legs, or the bunker's not made in time. <laughs> it's it's mm, yeah. Uh, so frustrating, but again, I like this bunker placement out of alive. It seems so weird and just so strange But the more you guys see this matchup with good players play you're gonna see that bunker placement become a lot more common uh, Not popping the overcharge usually that's used pretty commonly to stop the Reaper from seeing anything at all because the overcharge is of course so cheap, but uh, Reaper gets a decent scout in the main Yeah, I suppose the robotic facility was so far into the front that as soon as it jumped up it pretty much saw everything there really was to see which was the robotic facility, so probably not too concerned about hiding anything after that. Uh, so just addressing the whole no delay thing really quick, folks. We we did actually start our stream today with a three minute delay as we normally standardly do. Was informed that they would like us to use no delay as nobody's using any delay. And while Bobble is being a little bit sarcastic about Korean betters, for those who don't know, uh, the scam was once upon a time you would use like 15 minutes of delay the betting guy would be in the game watching, and by the time the bets were open live on a stream, he would already know the results. They specifically are wanting to use no delay so that that accusation can't be made, what with the name of the tournament being the Cyber Bet Race Wars. So, um, just to clarify so everyone's fully aware, like that there is absolutely no way to cheat off of no delay, at least to my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, but uh, we do have Blink coming up behind all this, and uh, while he researches Blink, MC is going to be going for this adapt drop in the main base. Adepts are immediately spotted, though. Going to struggle a little bit against the Marines, but with some good micro, uh, that is. Uh, never that, really a question with MC. That's six-range pickup. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those things where I think it's really cool, and it has definitely made drops a lot more uh, of a necessity. And uh, the Warp Prison, there's so many good things about this thing. I just hate that it doesn't cost gas. <laughs> I'm just going to be completely honest about it. 
Overlord drops. Player, I love that it doesn't cost gas. I, I, it's not like Overlord drops. Those cost gas. Medivax, those <laughs> cost gas. Warp prisms. Oh, they can move faster than the speed of light and pick up from a million miles away. No, that should only cost minerals. I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> But before we get to uh, to actual, like <laughs> those are jokes. Before anyone starts getting too actual balance money about it, this is a really good unit, and we'll make sure. Hopefully, MC doesn't lose it. One of the big aspects of the warp prism now, of course, is its warp in speed being a huge factor to reinforcing front lines. As uh, if you just build a proxy pylon, it takes forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, proxy pylons. Unless you go for the gateways, they are really more of just backup uh, reinforcements rather than the primary uh, method of reinforcement at all. Oh, man, Viking and the Liberator both finding the War Prism, they're going to be able to snatch this guy down, and Adept's going to be walking That's... their way back home. A bit unfortunate for MC, because you were saying it's one of those ways that you really seize that map control of it. You keep your opponent at home with that War Prism. Yeah, the threat of the War Prism outside your base is like the scariest damn thing for any Terran player, but... Uh, killing the first one's nice. Second one comes out pretty quickly. The downside is like you don't really want to be spending. Uh, it's not about minerals or gas, despite my jokes a moment ago. But actual time on the robo, like you'd much rather be producing an immortal or another observer or literally anything else other than the war prism. Should you be able to? Uh, there's been a small handful of players. Patience gives a shout out. He's actually one of the best players in Korea right now, according to the latter. He's been using a lot of double warp prisms, at least in the games we've been seeing in the Elima League, and it's kind of, kind of wonderfully gross. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the double War Prism play just because we do see a lot of Protoss players still end up losing that War Prism. And when you lose the War Prism, you suddenly don't have room for any kind of uh, secondary wave of reinforcements after you lose that first one. We just see so many Protoss pushes end. But on top of that, there is also the this... double ability for harassment. But oh, this is going to be this is going to be a little bit dirty. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this blink all in, we could see coming from a mile away. No upgrades at all behind this. Alive kind of had to do some guesswork, so that's why the bunker's not done yet. Liberators are going to switch up, but there might just be too many stalkers. They blink out of range of that Liberator shot. And while there's new Liberators coming up, as the ground army disappears, there's not going to be anything to stop the stalkers. And it looks like MC, with a bit of a classic Protoss strategy, blink all in, is actually going to take the series. <laughs> Wow, what do I can't even burrow? SC was getting pulled. It's getting desperate. Cyclone trying to get some shots off too. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That kept the lock on through Blink. I had no idea it would do that. Yeah, no, I, I learned that uh, the hard way in a uh, match in the beta versus Ryung. It was a very frustrating match. Uh, Cyclones can do pretty well versus Blink Stalkers as long as they have the vision, but it's good, just good, really good, 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 good game, game, game. game. 